So here is the situation. I work part time and my nine month old baby Rowan is at his childminders three full days a week now. It used to be half days, we have now moved to full days and he is exclusively breastfed. So when we're together, I nurse him straight on the boob and then when he's at his childminders, he drinks expressed milk from a bottle. I made a whole video about breastfeeding and my whole journey with that on my sex education channel, which you can go watch if you're interested. And I asked if some of you would be interested in seeing a video that was about my pumping and feeding routine. And some of you said, yes, you would be interested in that. And so that is what we are going to do today. So I'm gonna talk you through it right from the beginning, from when I started pumping when Rowan was six weeks old, to then when he started doing half days at a childminders when he was about three and a half months old, to now being nine months old and doing full days with a childminder. I'll take you through what my routine was then, what it is now, things that I have learned, and also when he was about six, seven months old, I did a weekend away, two days and one night. And so I'll chat through that whole process with pumping as well. And big shout out and thank you to HelloFresh who are sponsoring this video that's all about my baby's pumping and feeding routine. And HelloFresh helps out with mine and Dan's feeding routine because I gotta be fed in order to feed the baby. Very, very important. So let's get into it. So starting with the newborn phase, I was advised by midwives and by a lactation consultant to not start pumping until I was six weeks postpartum to first establish breastfeeding so that my supply and Rowan's demands were like all in sync and everything before I started throwing pumping into the mix. And so that's what I did. I think I got impatient and started pumping at like five and a half weeks, but about around then. So at this stage, I was exclusively nursing and trying to get in an extra pump during the day in order to build up a freezer stash, just in case there was any time when I couldn't be with him and so Dan could give him some milk out of a bottle. But then also because we knew that I wanted to go back to work at around three months and he would be going to childcare, you need milk for day one. You know, I'm gonna pump obviously when he's at the childminders, but I still need to give the childminder milk that's already been pumped on day one. So building up a bit of a freezer stash was something that we wanted to do. So we had a bit of a safety blanket. However, it proved very difficult in those early days. Dan's paternity leave was just six weeks long. So at the time that I started pumping, I was also solo parenting most days and I would try to pump during his morning nap but Rowan has always been a very short napper so when I managed to get him down if I managed to get him down for a nap that wasn't on me or in a sling or in the pram which to be honest was not very often anyway I would then like get the pump out and by the time I got myself set up and ready to go he would wake up and be crying and wanting more boob so it was very very difficult I maybe managed it like only once or twice but during that newborn phase I did manage to get some pumping done but it was always when someone else was around to look after Rowan so it would be Dan on the weekends or if we had family visiting so Rowan would actually be awake and not needing me to breastfeed him and he'd be being played with with someone else and I could pump then. So that's how I managed to do most of my pumping pre him going to childcare in the like six weeks to three months kind of age. And I would only do one a day as and when I could. So it wasn't much of a big routine. Also, if Rowan woke up or if he needed boob right after I finished pumping, that was never an issue because if he latched, then the milk would come. However, if I tried to pump right after feeding him, less successful. Half days childcare. So when Rowan was about three and a half months old, he started doing four half days a week. Each half was about four hours and it was sometimes in the morning and sometimes in the afternoon. When we first started, we had no idea 
how much milk he was going to need on that first day because up until then I'd just been nursing him and so we had no data. We had no information to go off as to actually how much in a day he was drinking. But it just took trial and error to get it right in terms of like how much I was able to pump. And then the childminder always told us like how much he had to drink. And so I knew roughly how much I needed to pump each day and we knew how much to give her every day as well. So the pump that I was using was the Medela Freestyle Flex, I think it is called. And yes, I did buy this one with my own money. However, since then, I've now worked with Medela on some sponsored Instagram content and they gifted me another pump of theirs, which we'll get onto, but this is not sponsored by them. I've actually now since lent the first pump that I bought from them to a friend, so I don't have it to show you now, but here's some photos. Mm -mm -mm. So at three and a half months old, Rowan was feeding maybe every two hours or so. And so I thought originally when he was going to be doing four hours at his childminders, that if I fed him before we left and then I would pump halfway through my work session. So I'd pump two hours after I dropped him off and then I would feed him again when I had him back with me. And I thought in my head that that would work best because that replicated his feeding patterns the most. And I wanted to be able to replicate that with my pumping. However, what I very quickly learned is that if I pumped in the middle of his time there, so two hours after, I never really got enough milk. And that's quite worrying because I want to at least be pumping the same amount that he is drinking. And yes, we have the freezer stash, which has been very, very helpful for the days for whatever reason I haven't pumped enough. And so we dip into the freezer stash to top up. But of course, we don't want that happening every single day, because then very quickly we would run out of milk entirely. But it was quite stressful. And that leads me on to some of the things that I learned. And I learned most of these things during this stage because it was like the beginning and so most of the learning was happening then obviously I'm still learning new things now but most of it happened then and a lot of it of course still applies to my situation now as well the first thing that I learned was to actually wait a full four hours if possible from the last time I fed him to when I pump what I started to notice was that this was around the time that I would get like the boob twinge. The best way that I can describe it is that it's like an electric pulse, like an electric shock or current, like going through my boobs. And I know that that is the feeling that I get in my boobs when it's time to pump or time to feed. It's like my boobs are telling me, hey, I need to be emptied. And so when we were doing those half days, what I started doing was instead of pumping in the middle of my work session, I would pump as the last thing that I did before I went to go and pick him up. And I got loads more milk because I'd given my boobs time to restock. <laughs> and that became my new routine. I'd just finish off work and then I would pump and then I would leave. And of course I would still nurse Rowan as soon as we got back home and that was always fine. The milk was flowing and it meant that we just like always have this moment together when we are reunited and have a little feed. So I mentioned before that the low amounts of pumping made me stressed. And then the other thing that I learned was that stress reduces supply. So I would be sitting there pumping, stressed about work, like something stressful would have been happening. And then I'm trying to pump and letdown is taking forever and like not much is coming out. And so then I'm just like even more stressed because I'm like, I can't feed my baby. And then that's then making it less likely that I'm going to produce milk. And it's just this stressful, vicious cycle. So one of the things that I have made sure that I do now is I really just take the time to separate whatever it is that I'm doing. If I have had a stressful work day or day for whatever reason, I try and just go, okay, we're putting that to the side for now. I need to transition into pumping mode, which means like relaxing. And so for those 10, 15 minutes, I just go, whatever it is, I will deal with that. Like I can come back to it. But right now, like this is my focus and I just need to make sure that my body is feeling 
not stressed. <laughs> there have been so many times where I've been really stressed and like rushing about and being like, ah oh, shit, I also need to pump. And then I'm like quickly trying to pump whilst also like answering some stressful emails or like doing some calls or, or like whatever it is that's stressing me out. I'm then trying to deal with whilst I'm also pumping. And that has just always been a recipe for disaster because then I just get more stressed because there's no milk coming and yada yada yada. So we have a chill time. I watch some very cute videos of Rowan to help with my letdown and just like help like relax and center me and just chill out for 10 minutes whilst that happens. And that has definitely helped with getting the milk flowing. One of the other things that I've learned is that my evening supply is shit and i think this is a pretty common thing like supply is like meant to be better in the mornings than it is in the evenings like across the board for most people anyway but sometimes i would go out in the evening and dan would be looking after rowan and feeding him from a bottle and when i have come home i would then pump and the supply is usually pretty crap i don't normally get a huge amount out and there's been some evenings where i've literally got nothing out and other evenings where I've just like sat there and just like hand expressed. <laughs> I've just been like squeezing. And I have managed to get like 50 mils out of both boobs total from a hand expressing session in the evening, just like chilling out on the sofa, just like squeezing milk into a bottle. <laughs> what fun, what fun. So before I chat about what our pumping and feeding routine is now that he is doing full days and also giving you those juicy, juicy stats from my weekend away, let me tell you about this video sponsor, HelloFresh. So yes, thank you so much to our sponsors, HelloFresh, for helping out with mine and Dan's feeding routine because you need fed parents <laughs> to be able to look after a baby and you especially need a fed breastfeeding nursing person in order to then feed that baby. It's very important. So thank you to HelloFresh for that because... <laughs> Oh my goodness. I absolutely love HelloFresh. I've been using them for years. I am a meal box gal. I absolutely love a recipe. Give me a recipe to follow and I bloody love cooking. <laughs> Give me no recipe to follow and I will panic in the kitchen. <laughs> That's me. That's that. I'm that kind of cook. Dan is more of the go with the flow kind of cook. I am a this kind of cook. So maybe you set some New Year's resolutions this year and if you watched my video, you'll know that I also set some this year and as it is now February, you know, like how are we getting on? Do we need a little extra helping hand with our resolutions? And HelloFresh is here to support you in your new routines and your new resolutions, whatever they may be. And so with our new routine of Rowan doing three days a week in childcare and me working three days a week, having HelloFresh has just been so, so brilliant. When everything feels very new and you're trying to settle into a new routine, it just reduces the stress because then it is one less thing to think about because I know that dinner is sorted and it is going to be really easy to make and really delicious to eat. Because of the uh, busy life of a working mum, I tend to gravitate towards HelloFresh's rapid range, which are recipes that can be cooked in 20 minutes or less, which is ideal for our evening routine as a family. Dan gets back home from work and then he gets to have time with Rowan whilst I get to decompress from work and parenting by cooking and then we all eat together and it's lovely. Last night, I cooked for us quick butter chicken masala with mustard seed, green beans, and garlic rice. And it was absolutely delicious. As you can see, it only takes six steps and it was a 20 minute and it was yum, yum, yum. And with most of HelloFresh's rapid range, they tend to be really quick to tidy up, but Dan did that whilst I got to play with Rowan for his bath time. And I have a discount for you. If you use my code MORHANA60, then you will get 60% off your first box and 25% off your next two boxes, plus some free gifts. You can use my link in the description or click the QR code 
How fancy. How fancy. Thank you so much to HelloFresh for sponsoring and keeping me fed with as little stress as possible and keeping my baby fed as a result. And now onto what our pumping and feeding routine looks like now. All right, full days childcare. So for three days a week, Rowan is now at his childminders for eight hours. That is double the amount of time in a day that he was there before, but he's thriving. He absolutely loves it. So bearing in mind that I get the most amount of milk if I leave around four hours between last feed or pump and the next pump. I now pump around lunchtime and then I also pump as the last thing that I do before I go and pick him up. This routine for me is working really well, especially when it comes to the like stress element, because now that I have full days of work, I do try and still schedule in like a lunch break, <laughs> a lunch break. <laughs> As a freelancer, what is a lunch break? So now I have this bit in the middle of the day where whatever I was doing in the morning, we can forget about that, park that, or maybe I like rounded it off and we finished up whatever that was. And so I have this time to relax, to eat my own lunch and to pump. And also sometimes our childminder will send us cute photos and videos of Rowan. So I will look at those to help the letdown go. Ooh, ooh, ooh. So the other thing that's changed is that I'm using a different pump. So it's the same brand, it's Medela, but it's their Freestyle Flex Inbra pump. And this is the one that was gifted to me and I did some sponsored Instagram content with them. But again, this is not sponsored. This is just me talking about my experience. But this is now my daily pump. I love this pump. This plastic case I just got from Boots, but it's very handy because sometimes I'm out and about with this. But essentially, this is my pump. This goes in my bra and then this, and they attach together with the thing. And then let's go. Now, the other thing that has changed since Rowan has started doing his full days since I've started using this pump, but then also since he started like eating more solids, I honestly don't know which thing it is or if it's a mixture of all of them, probably a mixture of all of them. But I am now pumping way more than he is drinking. Like I was giving the childminder double what I was giving her before because I was like, he's doing twice as long. And so I'm going to give her twice as much milk to feed him throughout the day. No, no, no. He is drinking in eight hours about the same amount that he was drinking in four hours, but he's eating way more food. But then when he's with me, his nursing pattern and how much he latches onto the boob, that has not changed. But obviously like the boob is not just food and drink, it's lots of other things as well. But it's just very interesting. It basically means that my freezer stash is really filling up and we are running out of space. One of the things that I have started doing now because now that I know that I'm pretty consistently pumping more milk than he's drinking and that he needs in the day. I'm using some of the extra milk that I pump in his food. So like in his porridge or like if I wanna make him like an omelet or scrambled eggs or pancakes or whatever, I can just use my milk instead of using cow's milk or whatever. So that's kind of handy. It's honestly wild how much milk I have in the freezer. Let me show you. Look at all of that milk. It is ridiculous. Uh, yeah, it's getting, it's getting a bit out of hand. Like, can I donate any of this? I don't know how milk banks work. So as I mentioned, I had a weekend away from Rowan. It was for a work event and I did invite Dan and Rowan to come with me, but Dan said that he would rather stay at home with the boy by himself and I was like, Fair enough, go at it. But I know that some of you guys will love nerding out about the numbers as much as I do. So here are our weekend away stats. So it was two days, one night. I left Saturday morning before Rowan woke up and I came back Sunday evening after he had gone to bed. And I pumped about every four hours. And very luckily for me, the event that I was at, the schedule of like the talks and the breaks and things, it kind of matched up with my pumping schedule. Not on purpose, pure coincidence, but very grateful for that. <laughs> it did mean that I missed 
like hanging out and chatting with people in the breaks because I was just pumping, but still. So logistics, this is a huge part of it. I was stressing so hard beforehand on just like the logistical details of how to pump and store and then transport all of the milk. But this is what I came up with. This is my situation. The venue and the event organizers let me have access to a room where I could do all of my pumping and also have access to the kitchen where there was a sink where I could rinse all of my equipment. And it also had a mini fridge in the kitchen where I could store all of the bags of my pumped milk. So I also have this like mini cool bag with this block of ice and this just came with the first pump that I bought from Nadella and I use this pretty much daily. So I had this with me and the venue let me put this in their freezer to keep it frozen and then overnight in my hotel because I had to pump in the evening and once in the night and then in the morning again I used this as my own in-room mini fridge because the room itself didn't have a mini fridge so this was my overnight fridge to keep my overnight milk cool and then it was back to the venue for like the second day of talks and things and I went straight from the venue to the train station so basically this entire bag was filled it had the ice pack in it and then it was filled with milk and I couldn't believe that I got it all in also like we went into this weekend so blind not knowing actually how much Rowan was going to drink over the course of two days and a night and also how much I was going to pump so I just took this with me innocently being like this will be fine it almost wasn't fine. There was like a little bit of a leakage, but managed to sort it all out. But these are the numbers. I know how much I pumped because I like write the amount on all of the different bags. And Dan kept all of the bags of milk that he defrosted for Rowan over the weekend so that we could also track how much he was drinking so that we knew for future times when I might be away. So Rowan drank 1,145 mils and I pumped 1,490 mils. Woohoohoo! So at least, at least I replaced the freezer stash and oh my goodness was that necessary because by the time I returned there was just one bag of frozen milk left in the freezer stash. Honestly, we got so lucky. We very naively were just like, it'll be fine. But luckily I had pumped enough before, like months before and built up this freezer stash that we could then use for me to be able to have this time away. But I couldn't believe it. There was 120 mils left, just, just that. And then I returned and was like, here, more things for the freezer stash. So there you go. That is why the importance of the freezer stash. So it is almost the end of my working day. So there's really only one thing left for me to do before I go and pick up Rowan. And that is pump. Am I being a complete hypocrite by not stopping work to relax and pump and instead vlog my pumping? Yes. Let's go! Needs to charge. I usually only pump for around 10 minutes. That's all it really takes to get what I need. And I need to remember to put this on charge. Pack all this away. Oh, I'm trying to spill any milk. This is the kind of milk that I will cry over if it gets spilled. There is a lot of emotional attachment to this milk. One always gets more than the other. So let's pour it out now. Ba -ba -ba -ba. Bang on 100 mils. Look at that. So that is one out of the two pumps that I do in a day, but that is basically all he will drink in a day. So I'm basically pumping double what he needs at the moment. Right, I just need to wash these up, but there you go. There is my pumping routine with 
a baby in childcare for full days, three days a week, and kind of like the history of how we got here. Thank you so much for watching. I hope that you found this video interesting or useful. I know that when I started breastfeeding and also pumping, I just had the most weird specific questions of like, okay, but then how do you get the milk from here to here? And then what do you do with it? And honestly, I wish I hadn't stressed about all of that stuff because it is just trial and error and just kind of like figure it out as you go. But I understand like the needing to know and having like the weirdest small questions that seem like they've got really obvious answers and they feel obvious to me now <laughs> that I've like experienced it. But oh my goodness, um, it does feel like such a minefield before you get started, but you'll get there you'll get there. So I do hope that this video has been useful and thank you so much to HelloFresh for sponsoring again. You can get 60% off your first box and 25% off your next two boxes and some free gifts when you use my code morehanna 60 I hope that you enjoy some great cooking and great food as I do. I hope that you're well and I'll see you in my next video. Bye bye.